Assassin's Creed Origins, for so many reasons, is a very special game. Next month, it will be six years old, which feels absolutely ridiculous. I swear it felt like only two years ago when I first watched the trailer for this game, not six. But of all the games in the Assassin's Creed series, Origins holds an extremely unique and important role. Not only is it the origin story to essentially the series and the Creed itself, but it was also the first game to truly reinvent the Assassin's Creed formula, for better or for worse. And on top of all of that, this game came off the heels of Assassin's Creed Syndicate in 2015, the second least selling game in the series, bringing the general interest in Assassin's Creed to an all-time low. At the time, there was plenty of concern that the series would continue on this descent, and the threat of the death of AC, while not likely, if things were to continue as they were, it was definitely headed in that direction. 2015 also happened to be one of the worst years financially for Ubisoft as a whole. So the game that came after Syndicate had to land. It had to renew people's faith and interest in the series. And to ensure that, the series took 2016 off. The first year without a new Assassin's Creed game since 2008. Granted, we got an Assassin's Creed movie that year, but uh, yeah. But then that brings us to 2017, where after years of lots of fans begging, Ubisoft finally hit the reset button on Assassin's Creed and brought us something new. Pretty ironic, considering it's the exact opposite people are begging for now. But Origins released, and it did so to great critical acclaim. Lots of 8s and 9s out of 10, it managed to bring lots of new players into the series while still satisfying long-term fans, and it quickly became one of the best selling games in the entire series. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say this game saved the series both figuratively and literally. And to this day, Origins, despite being a more RPG-focused AC game, is still held in very high regard amongst the community. Even those who typically dislike the new RPG formula still like Origins. For me, this game has been undeniably my favorite of the newest RPG trilogy, and in a lot of ways, I feel its successors failed to build on and capture the magic of what made this game work so well. And again, I'm someone who has always preferred the older AC formula, but I still adore this game and what it did for the series. In many ways, it feels like a reboot, but whatever you want to classify it as, it's also the savior of a, at the time, decade-old series. Assassin's Creed Origins' development cycle was quite unique for the series. The game was developed by Ubisoft Montreal, specifically Montreal 3, the team that was primarily responsible for Assassin's Creed Revelations and Black Flag. Led by its co-directors Jean Gustin and Ashraf Ismail, neither of which are at Ubisoft today. But Jean and Ashraf's main goal with developing Origins? Refresh Assassin's Creed. Origins started development in in early 2014, giving it almost four full years of development time, putting it towards one of the longer development cycles of any game in the series. The setting of Ancient Egypt was decided on after much request from the community, essentially since the series had begun. Which is rather ironic, considering Assassin's Creed 3's director Alex Hutchinson infamously said that Ancient Egypt, Feudal Japan, and World War I would be the worst possible time periods for an Assassin's Creed game. Well, ten years later and we're already getting two out of the three, and there's a World War I mission for AC Syndicate, so that day and age quite too well. And funnily enough, the team started Origins by taking Black Flag's map and turning all the bodies of water into masses of land as one giant open world. That was their goal, and Origins at the time had one of the biggest open worlds of the entire series. To fill that space, they brought 
modding common RPG open world quest design, puzzles, long running side quests, hunting, and military outposts. And on top of this, they completely overhauled the combat system, creating something very different from any other AC game in the series, in order to give the player more freedom and choice when it came to combat. As opposed to the counter based system or the revamped styles of Unity and Syndicate, Montreal elected to go with a hitbox based system, where the player could attack freely in any direction or area they wanted. A style of combat they felt was more befitting of a modern open world game, and you see a very similar style in many other games today. They also aimed to increase accessibility by making Origins the first game in the series with difficulty options. The team brought on multiple historians as consultants for the game, but the ultimate goal was not to make a one-to-one -one historically accurate Egypt, but rather fantasize and bring this immense sense of scale and wonder to it while still making it feel authentic and reasonably grounded. For example, a lot of the cities were made larger than they were in real life, and since this is taking place in 49 BC, records for certain areas of the world were non-existent, allowing the teams to get a little more creative and design this romanticized version of ancient Egypt, which I believe was the right decision. Keeping the game accurate to a certain degree, but also knowing this is a video game that is meant to be fun above all else, and bringing a little more of that Hollywood flair to Egypt. The game's story was headed up by Elaine Mercieka, who was invited on as a narrative director, a man who had spent the majority of his career writing punk rock plays, and a bit more of an unorthodox candidate to write for an Assassin's Creed game. But after one of the series' cinematic directors saw one of his plays, he wanted to bring him onto the project to bring some much needed creativity and edge to the game. Which of course would lead to the creation of one of the series' most beloved protagonists, Bayek. While fan favorite and longtime writer for the series, Darby McDevitt, was brought on as an additional writer, though he wouldn't stay on for the entirety of the project. And Montreal 3 was certainly not alone in this game's development. In fact, the directors described it as a co-development process, with some divide and conquer among other Ubisoft studios, allowing different support studios to focus and pour their resources into different regions of the world and game, where Montreal would lay some ground rules for quest design and the kind of tone and look they wanted to fit in with the style of the rest of the game. Meanwhile, Singapore, as they so often do, focused on naval combat, while Sophia, the creators of Rogue, focused on building the game's pyramids and tombs. But Montreal's sole main goal was to refresh Assassin's Creed, and they did just that. Regardless of what happened after that, many people loved this re invention of the series, especially at the time. That, with the unique settings, story, and some of the best visuals available for any game at the time, it's easy to see why Origins was such a home run. And it's because of the work put in by the nearly 1,000 people that worked on the game over the course of nearly four years. <laughs> Now, reinventing the series sounds good and all in theory, but how does it actually work in the game? Well, to understand the reinvention of Origins, we need to compare it to what Assassin's Creed was beforehand. AC, first and foremost, has been a stealth-focused series, with a heavy emphasis on free-running and parkour, usually taking place within a centralized, dense city, with some exceptions, like Black Flag and Rogue, that were a bit more open. Those games were definitely definitely more action-adventure focused than what we have in Origins. Origins keeps a lot of those core ideals and mechanics from those original games, like parkour and stealth, but brings it into a new genre. In some areas, it strips back and simplifies some of those mechanics, while in others, it completely rebuilds it. Like the combat, which I already discussed previously. Origins' combat system, especially at the time, felt like a breath of fresh air for the series 
abilities. It's not necessarily complex. You have a heavy and light attack, a dodge and roll, a block and parry, and a few different combos you can put together, along with a special attack you gain from filling your adrenaline meter. Compared to other games, it's quite simple, but for Assassin's Creed, this is still one of the more in-depth combat systems of the series. In a lot of ways, I felt it set a great foundation to be built upon in sequels, but unfortunately, in my opinion anyways, Odyssey and Valhalla's combat systems are a regression from Origins. I believe this game still has the best combat out of those three games, and honestly a big reason why is the parry system. Parrying in Origins is significantly more difficult than in Odyssey and Valhalla. In those games, all you need to do is press a single input within a very generous window, and you'll have a successful parry. While in Origins, you need two inputs. First, you need to raise your shield, and then parry with the right timing, which isn't always easy, especially at first. You have to play with it a bit and learn the timing of the enemy's attacks before you can master the parry system. And on top of this, different enemy types with different weapons have different parry timings, making it far more challenging, but therefore more rewarding when you get that successful parry. Which is one of the biggest reasons I prefer Origins Combat to the likes of its successors. There's a learning curve. It may not be a massive learning curve on the level of something like a Souls game, but it's certainly there. I could feel myself getting better and more comfortable with the combat system as I progressed. And getting those parries after trial and error and learning the timings is way more satisfying than pressing a single input. Each weapon type also has clear strengths and weaknesses. The dual swords are extremely fast but have a very short reach, while heavy weapons like a mace deal insane damage but have very slow attack speeds. Which is why having the ability to equip two different weapons that you can switch between on the fly is so useful. I think in general this combat system just feels more challenging, especially if you choose to play on hard or nightmare, which makes the process of learning and overcoming more satisfying. I particularly enjoyed using a cursed scythe that dealt a ridiculous amount of damage, but in return took away two bars of my health. It felt like a true glass cannon, high risk, high reward build. It made all those encounters far more intense. I also feel Odyssey and Valhalla overuse slow motion in combat. Whenever you get a good time to dodge in those games, you'll go into slow motion. While that is still true for Origins, the timing is much harder to get, and the slow motion is active for a fraction of the time. Once again, making it more challenging but satisfying to pull off. And I will add that Origins has some really nice brutal combat finishers that are a nice touch. Look, I'm not going to oversell it. Origins combat is not the best. I've seen many other open world RPGs do it better, and it's still a rather shallow system. But it worked for what it was, and compared to the rest of the series, it's still one of the more engaging and challenging combat systems. And it sets such a good foundation that could have been expanded upon, which is why it's shocking that Odyssey and Valhalla would go on to simplify it even more so by doing things like dumbing down the parry system. But another core pillar of the Assassin's Creed series that was changed with Origins was the parkour. In a similar way, Origins aimed to make parkour more streamlined and accessible to the average player, which unfortunately entailed stripping out a lot of those advanced movements and mechanics present in prior AC games, which is perfectly represented in the decision to remove a manual sprint button. Instead of something that the player had to learn and get better with over time, the parkour is just there to allow the player to get from point A to B. The parkour in Origins is smooth and perhaps less frustrating than previous entries, but also far more basic. Parkour is basically just pushing the joystick forward and holding a button. It still looks cool for the most part, but there's very little beneath the surface. The side and back ejects are still present, but the parameters to actually engage them are far more limited, and you'll rarely find situations where you even need to do them in the first place place. You no longer have to search for handholds or areas to climb, as you can essentially climb almost anything in the game. The parkour does have a fluidity to it, but with no real depth or advanced mechanics to learn, the system feels shallow with no real skill ceiling or room to improve. There's nothing really to get better at, it's mostly moving forward and holding a button. Now granted, there's not too many scenarios where you 
you even really need to use parkour. Your main traversal vehicle is your mount. You don't spend a lot of time free running through a dense city like in many previous entries. The world isn't designed for parkour to be your main mode of traversal. With that said, within those few dense cities, it's still well enough designed for it, with things like lifts and corner swings from classic Assassin's Creed. Overall though, it's clear they wanted to streamline parkour and make it a bit more accessible to the new player, which I dislike personally, but I do feel like Origins parkour is still more smooth and fluid compared to the two games that came after it. And once again, a very similar situation with Stealth. Noticing a pattern, the stealth, like the parkour, was simplified a fair amount, however it does still keep the core of Assassin's Creed intact. There's plenty of stealth opportunities in Origins if that's how you choose to play, which is how I always do. And you have a limited but good selection of tools at your disposal. You get sleep and poison darts, fire bombs, you can berserk enemies similar to previous entries, and you can poison bodies. The usual double assassination has been replaced by a chain assassination you unlock through the skill tree, and while it's fun to pull off, I definitely missed having the ability to double assassinate, especially since the chain assassinations can be a little inconsistent at times. The smoke bomb is in the game, but it is very different. It's a lot more situational and can only be used after dodging or a melee attack. It's especially handy against those filakes, but you can't freely aim and throw it like you could in the previous games. So the amount of situations you can use them in are far more limited. The assassinations in Origins are done with a hidden blade, which are quick and satisfying, but as I mentioned in a recent video, there's very little variety to those animations so it gets rather dull after only a few hours. I definitely wish they had more assassination animations in this game. I think it would have gone a long way. On top of this, Origins is the first game in the series to not have guaranteed one-hit assassinations. Now this is something they remedied on launch by allowing players to animus hack and turn on guaranteed assassinations. However, ever since Uplay became Ubisoft Connect, the animus hacks don't work anymore. The panel is like completely broken, so you can't even do that now. However, you can upgrade your hidden blade and its damage by gathering materials, and there were very few instances in Origins where I couldn't one-shot assassinate somebody. Usually high-level captains and filakes would be able to tank it, but about 98% of the enemies in the game are still able to be one-shotted, assuming you're the correct level and you've put some upgrades into your hidden blade. Now, I'd prefer a guaranteed assassination option like in Valhalla, but thankfully it's not too big of an issue in Origins since most enemies can still be assassinated. Origins also places a heavy emphasis on using your bow, which is particularly helpful in stealth. Again, like a lot of other things, I feel Origins by far handled the bows the best out of the RPG trilogy. There's multiple types where you can have up to two equipped at once for a variety of different situations, and the bows bring a new dynamic to the game, especially in stealth. The Predator Bow in particular is so fun to use, and thankfully it almost always one-shots enemies to the head. Getting kills with it is so satisfying. I enjoyed using the other bows as well, and I like how similar to the weapons they all have their uses and different strengths and weaknesses. The way you gather intel was also changed in Origins. Instead of the traditional eagle vision, you can control your eagle Senu to scout from above. It was a cool idea, and I like that you can see nearby points of interest and objectives with Senu, but I did find myself missing the traditional eagle vision for spotting enemies, because there were plenty of times where I'd spend minutes scouting an area with Senu, only to be detected by an enemy that I missed hiding somewhere. The game is also missing social stuff which since the first game had been a core part of the stealth experience in Assassin's Creed. Apparently, they tried to incorporate social stealth into the game during development, but couldn't make it work within the game's various systems, and even if it was in the game, it likely would have been something similar to what we got in Valhalla, which social stealth is barely useful in that game anyways. Origins did bring back naval combat to an extent, 
only it's not as prevalent and open-ended as it was in Black Flag. You can only partake in specific linear sections with Aya, but still, I found it enjoyable. I know a lot of people love naval combat in these games though, so perhaps there are those who were disappointed that it wasn't as prevalent in Origins as it was in Black Flag, Rogue, or Odyssey. So, reinventing the series had both its pros and cons. I think Origins managed to strike a nice balance of creating something new and refreshing for the series, while still keeping the core and identity of Assassin's Creed intact. Unfortunately though, a lot of those core mechanics were streamlined in favor of making the game more accessible for new audiences. But I did think they were on the right track with some of these changes that Odyssey and Valhalla failed to build upon and improve in meaningful ways, like combat for example. It wasn't a perfect reinvention, but at the time, it was a much needed breath of fresh air. So with Origins being the first game in the series to truly embrace an RPG design, it incorporated many elements and mechanics present in similarly sized open world RPGs. One of the biggest inspirations for Origins design actually probably comes from my favorite game of all time, The Witcher 3. I've always been a fan of the old AC games, but I still really enjoy RPG games, which is evident by my favorite game of all time. Now personally, I always felt that these new newest RPG AC games kind of lost the identity of what made AC so special to begin with, but Origins is a little bit more reserved with its RPG mechanics in comparison to Odyssey and Valhalla. So while playing Origins, it still felt like I was playing an Assassin's Creed game. But one of the core mechanics that defines an open world RPG is its leveling system. Even though this is still the first true RPG Assassin's Creed game, Origins is not the first game in the series to have a leveling system. Its predecessor Syndicate also featured a leveling system, something I criticized it for in my review of that game. But Syndicate's leveling system was far smaller and less involved than in Origins, as it only went up to level 10. But Origins fully embraces that leveling system as a core piece of the game. Now again, personally, I don't like having levels in an Assassin's Creed game, but it is necessary in a game like Origins. Origins, where so much of the game's systems and structures are built on the foundation of this leveling system. Whether it's the skill tree, weapons and tools, quests, enemies, everything ties into the levels, which is totally normal for an RPG to do. I think what perhaps may be frustrating about it to some people is the way the levels and XP is designed. It makes it so you have to do side quests in order to be the proper level for the main quest. I'm someone who usually does as many side quests as possible anyways, but when this game first came out, I was the opposite. I was someone who only liked to play the main story, and I remember having certain quests become level gated was frustrating to me back then. And I think if you only want to play the main story, you should be able to do that. Yes, I do highly recommend the side content because a lot of it is great, but the player should have agency over how they choose to play. And I don't like that it forces people to do side quests, that they may not want to. But speaking of the side quests, that's another area with some huge changes from previous entries. For Origins, the development team wanted to make sure that every side quest in the game had a story attached to it in some way, shape, or form. Once again, similar to The Witcher 3. And this was a great philosophy for them to adapt. It makes the side content oftentimes far more engaging, and while those stories may not always be the deepest or the most well-written, there's some gems in there, and a fair amount of them also connect to the main story in several ways. For example, there's a couple times where you'll run into a character on the main path, and then afterwards, once you're done with them, you can go back to them and help them out or do a side quest with them. It's a really effective way to flesh out all the game's characters and give them more screen time where they couldn't in the main quest line. And a lot of these quests actually have mo-capped cutscenes as well, which I really appreciate. It looks so much better than the typical static conversations where nobody
nobody moves and the NPCs use these awkward gestures and motions that don't look quite human or normal. And that's because they aren't. They aren't being motion captured by real people. Which Origin still has plenty of those scenes, don't get me wrong, but I was surprised at how many of these side quests actually had mo-capped cutscenes. It makes them feel more important. And obviously in a massive game like this, you can't have motion capture on everything. There's simply way too much content, and it's probably far more expensive, but having it in certain moments really elevated those quests. Another element that was overhauled in Origins to fit the RPG style was the looting. In previous games, you'd usually find money or resources by looting corpses and chests, and while the same is true in Origins, there's far more things to loot, and you only need a single quick button press to loot items instead of the longer searching animations, like when looting bodies in the previous games. Looting is far more integral to the experience of Origins, as it's where you'll get most of your weapons and materials. And all of the weapons have different rarities they fall under as well, blue being common, purple as rare, and yellow as legendary. Again, something very common you'll see in RPG games or even looter shooters. Each weapon has different stats, damage numbers, and legendary weapons typically get a special perk to assist you in combat, like recovering health upon a kill, or being able to instantly charge an overpower attack. Each weapon can be upgraded through the blacksmith to increase its level and overall damage, which I really like, as if I found a weapon I liked using, I could keep using it and upgrading it, instead of being forced to swap to a different higher level weapon. Along with the weapons, you can upgrade each piece of Bayek's gear, however, unlike Odyssey and Valhalla, you can't actually equip different gear pieces. The gear is fixed but upgradable, and all you can change about it is the cosmetic appearance with the different outfits. I actually prefer it this way, it keeps the focus on upgrading the gear instead of constantly looting and changing it around. This game also has some really nice outfits, and I like that there's no gameplay related effects to them, they are purely cosmetic like a majority of the outfits in the older games. Origins did a really great job of making the game feel expansive and big, while still keeping focus and trimming down on the bloat. It's significantly less bloated than Odyssey, which some may like or dislike depending on their preference, but personally, I prefer Origins more focused approach and design to these RPG mechanics. This game does lean a little more into the fantasy aspect, which I don't love. I've always preferred AC to feel a little more grounded. Don't get me wrong, the series was never fully realistic, but it was grounded and realistic to an extent. While this game does bring in some light fantasy elements, it's still not quite to the extent of Odyssey and Valhalla. For example, you can't turn invisible, teleport, or remove fall damage. However, you do still get things like glowing weapons and skins that are surely not accurate to the setting of ancient Egypt. But like I said, Origins doesn't go too far with that stuff, which I really appreciate personally. Some people may not care about that, or they even like the fantasy elements, but for a more historically grounded series like Assassin's Creed, I prefer for it to keep a relative sense of realism. The skill tree also takes up the appearance of something you'd see in an RPG game. While Assassin's Creed has used skill trees many times in the past, Origins works a little differently. For one, it's not linear or story based, it's XP based, so every time you level up, you'll get one skill point. The skill tree offers new moves, tools, combos, and even things like increased XP rates for performing different actions like an assassination or a headshot with a bow. I do feel like in general, the rate at which you gain XP in Origins is significantly slower than Odyssey and Valhalla, especially when you consider the level cap for the main game is level 40. That's increased with the DLCs, but still, compared to Odyssey's cap of level 99 and Valhalla's is essentially endless, that's a huge difference. Origins also made several changes to the standard HUD we had gotten used to in the previous games. For one, the removal of the minimap, which I actually really like. I feel like minimaps can kill the immersion a bit and over provide the player with information they just don't need. I also love that the game just won't flat out tell you where to go all the time. Oftentimes you'll get a general location and have to find it yourself with Senu. You're not just following a map marker constantly. Anytime when a game sort of takes 
takes the reins off and lets you freely find and figure things out on your own is way more fun for me. Sure, it makes things a bit more difficult, but that's what makes it more of a satisfying exploration experience as well. Origins also brought in many traditional RPG HUD elements, like enemy health bars, for example. Now, as someone who always tries to get the most immersion out of these games I possibly can, I just turned the HUD onto minimal, which removes those enemy health bars. I definitely recommend playing this way if you haven't. There are a few times where not having a HUD can be a bit difficult, like when you can't remember specific controls and such, or you can't see an enemy's level, but more often than not, it was worth it to me for that increased challenge and immersion. Actually having to rely on my eyes and ears, instead of tagging each enemy with my magic eagle, is far more immersive. As the series' first foray into the RPG genre, Origins, in comparison to Odyssey and Valhalla, is rather tame with its RPG mechanics, which depending on your preference may be a good or bad thing, but as a longtime fan and someone who has an affection for those older games, I found it as a good thing. It was new enough to be refreshing, but not so much so that it completely obliterated the identity and reasons I love Assassin's Creed in the first place. As I mentioned earlier, Ancient Egypt had been a long time fan requested setting for the series, and in plenty of the prior games there had always been passing mentions that the fight between Assassins and Templars predated even the formation of the Assassin's Creed during the Crusades. We've been fighting them for thousands of years, even longer if you believe the stories of their origins. I do, after all. I've seen the truth. So what better opportunity than with a fresh reboot of the series to go back and explore one of the series' biggest question marks, the origins of the Assassin's Creed, and pair it with one of the most requested settings from the community. Not only that, but you can explore the story of Amunet, a legendary assassin who has had several mentions in many of the prior games, including her own tomb in AC2. The setting and premise of the game seems like a match made in heaven, and with how popular this time period was, it's no wonder why Origins was able to generate so much interest, even from those unfamiliar with the Assassin's Creed franchise. But unlike many of the prior games, Origins had a lot of ground to cover, as this world did not just consist of a few cities, but essentially an entire country. The world is massive, and at the time, it was one of the biggest open worlds of the franchise. Black Flag still was technically larger, although most of its world is composed of water, while Origins has much more land mass. And then Odyssey would one-up it a year later with its ridiculously sized ancient Greece. But still, the scale and scope of Egypt was quite unprecedented for the series, and it created a shift in the way the world was designed and how the player interacted with it. Like I mentioned previously, because there is significantly more space, the world isn't quite as dense and compact as the prior game. Games. However, Origins still has a couple larger cities that offer a bit more of that dense city Assassin's Creed experience, though not quite to the same effect. Because the world is so open and massive, the encouraged forms of traversal are mounts, boats, and fast travel, as opposed to parkour and free running, which in an Assassin's Creed game isn't my preference. Since parkour is one of the pillars that makes this series what it is, that's what I'd prefer to be doing most of the time in the open world. But when you have a world this massive, traveling on foot via parkour is just not going to be a viable option most of the time. And that still doesn't take away from how stunning Egypt is. There's such a rich variety of different cities and environments to explore, whether it's the bustling streets of Alexandria, the Fayum, or the vast sand dunes and pyramids in Giza. The amount of detail this world is able to maintain while simultaneously being this large in scope 
scope is so impressive. And with the game set in Egypt, I think a lot of people would be worried about the world being bland and repetitive. After all, many people believe it's just all desert, which isn't the case. There's some beautifully vibrant and lively areas with palm trees, bodies of water, and lush green shrubbery. A complaint I often see with Origins Open World has to do with some of the more open and empty areas. Some people feel these portions of the map are too empty, and going through stretches of barren desert subtracts from the experience. But I disagree with this criticism personally. Almost every AC game will typically have a stretch of more empty, barren land, and in Origins, I think that emptiness actually works in part to the game's advantage. First of all, there's plenty of more dense areas filled with life, but this is still Egypt. A lot of people immediately think of vast open stretches of desert when they think of Egypt. And seeing just how massive that desert stretches out while traveling through it is so cool to me. It's part of that fantasy of having a game in ancient Egypt. Plus, when you throw in cool extra details like hallucinations and sandstorms, it's very interesting to explore. Not every single part of the world needs to be filled with structures or NPCs. Sometimes it's nice to have those more barren areas to complement those denser areas. And just seeing those massive pyramids off in the distance with miles of desert all around gives a feeling no other game can offer. I mean, not to mention you can literally climb the pyramids and synchronize at the top, which just gave me full chills. This game does offer a lot of viewpoints to fast travel to, but honestly, I think you're missing out if you're constantly fast traveling to whatever area is closest to your objective. It's so much better to travel there yourself and soak in the world. And who knows, maybe you'll miss a unique quest or treasure because you chose to fast travel. Now, obviously, I'm not saying fast travel doesn't have its uses. This world is huge and would take way too long to travel throughout the whole thing. But when the distance is manageable, more often than not, I just get on my mount and head there myself. Plus, I think fast traveling and having to go through that loading screen kind of takes you out of it. But most importantly, exploring this world is fun. Not only do you have all those different varied side quests and stories you can stumble upon, but there's also tons of treasure to find and hidden areas you can explore. I love the feeling of finding some secret area that wasn't marked on the map or part of a quest. It's something that's completely optional and likely an area that a lot of players will not even see. Now, I do think Origins relies too much on map markers. Ubisoft games are kind of commonly known for doing that, putting question marks over a lot of these places and kind of taking away some of the freedom and mystery that comes from open exploration. But still, finding secret tombs or exploring the inside of a pyramid, it's probably my favorite part of the exploration experience of the game. And side content aside, the world is also filled to the brim with other short form activities to engage in. You can intercept transports of several materials needed to upgrade your gear, like bronze and iron, along with hunting the several different animal types scattered across the world. Naturally, there's lots of different outposts and camps to clear out, which is always fun in these types of games for me. You can destroy the little Ptolemy statues, go into gladiator arenas to compete in various game modes, and you can even race in the Hippodrome. This game just offers so much to do in such a wide variety of different activities, most of which we've never experienced in an Assassin's Creed game before. And of course, visually, this is still one of the best looking games in the series, even six years later. Perhaps Odyssey and Valhalla have surpassed Origins in terms of fidelity, but in aesthetic, design, and even character models, I think AC Origins may still be the best looking game in the entire series. And considering how good it looks, it still runs very well on PC. And with the newest generation of consoles, Ubisoft even gave it a 60 FPS update for those. Which, big props to Ubisoft for doing that by the way, because this game is older, and I know of several other large open world games that have failed to do so all these years later. Mm-mm, <clears throat> Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, and the soundtrack is just perfect. I think pretty much every AC game has a good soundtrack, but Origins has one of the best in the series in my opinion for sure. Maybe it's not quite as iconic as Assassin's Creed 2's, to be fair, very few game soundtracks are, but the music in this game has such a distinct 
distinct sound. The second I hear a track from this game, I can almost immediately identify it as being from Origins because of that unique sound it has. It's almost like cyberpunk meets Egypt in a way. I'm not a musician, I can't really describe it that well, but I don't need to be to know that Sarah Schachner killed it with Origins OST. I'm not sure who exactly at Ubisoft had the idea to tell the origin story of the Brotherhood in ancient Egypt, but it was a very smart call. And Origins, to this day, in my opinion anyways, has one of the most impressive open worlds in a Ubisoft game in terms of sheer scope and detail. I do prefer the worlds in this series to be denser and city-focused, to better align with that assassin fantasy, but I can't deny Egypt's pure scale and variety of environments is so impressive. But that finally leaves us to talk about the narrative. Big spoiler warning here, I'm going to be talking about numerous major plot points, so you've been warned. Although I imagine most of you have already played this game, still, I thought it would be smart to give the warning anyways. So obviously what makes the story of Assassin's Creed Origins special is right there in the title. It's the origin story of the Brotherhood, therefore making it a particularly important entry into the series and lore. A lot of what we saw in the prior games, the core beliefs and ideologies of the Brotherhood, to even some of their most iconic traditions, originated from this story. And I can imagine it must have been a daunting task trying to write an origin story to a franchise that's already been going on for a decade. But all things said, I think they did a really good job of it. Because with an origin story like this, it could have easily felt very contrived. That happens a lot anytime you see a franchise do a prequel or origin story to previous works. A lot of them unnecessarily explain things that didn't really need to be explained, or the reasoning for something can feel convenient or hard to believe. They do this in a desperate attempt to try and connect those stories. One of the most immediate examples that comes to mind is in the Han Solo movie, Han is given the last name Solo because he's by himself. Get it? That's really on the nose, and I don't think we needed a backstory on how Han got the last name Solo. We can just simply accept that that's his name, not everything needs an explanation. And maybe Origins can be a little on the nose sometimes with things like this as well. Bayek drops the eagle skull and leaves an imprint in the sand that gives Aya the idea for the Creed's logo. It's a cool moment. I don't feel like we needed an explanation for how the Creed got its logo, but that's still believable to me. Me. The ring finger sacrifice tradition starts by Bayek losing his ring finger while assassinating a target, and then his subordinates intentionally chop theirs off to demonstrate their loyalty, dedication, and belief in Bayek and to the Brotherhood. That is very believable, and I like how they explained that. After everything that happened to Bayek and Aya, they come up with the core ideals and principles that set the foundation for what the Creed stands for, which holds true even centuries later as we can see. All in all, I like how they tied it together. It's obvious when the series started, it's not like they planned for Bayek and the Hidden Ones to begin in Egypt. They of course didn't know 10 years later the origins of the Brotherhood would be explored, but they did a good job at connecting it and making it make sense in the context of the rest of the series, which is what's most important to me. If this story left tons of plot holes and sloppily tried to tie itself into the lore and the rest of the games, this this game would not be anywhere as well praised as it is. But all of this really stems from the man at the helm, the godfather of the Assassin's Creed, the last Medjai, and the first assassin, Bayek of Siwa. Bayek, upon the game's release, immediately shot up to one of the more popular and beloved protagonists of the series. A lot of people may rank him as the best, or close to it, up there with one of gaming's most iconic protagonists, Ezio, which is a very very high honor to bestow upon a character in Assassin's Creed, and I think Bayek well deserves it. Bayek has such an incredible range. He feels very fleshed out, and you'll see almost every emotion possible with him throughout the story. Most importantly though, 
Bayek is an extremely likable character, and it's not just through pure empathy or association. Some stories will just have tragic things happen to the main character as a cheap way to make the audience empathize and root for them. But what I like about what Origins does with Bayek, because tragedy does still strike him, however, it doesn't open immediately with that. In fact, it opens with almost the opposite. You get to see this very scary, ruthless version of Bayek. This is a very, very different opening to anything we've seen in Assassin's Creed before, and it sets the tone accordingly. While there are moments of levity in Origins, this story can get very dark and bleak. But what's important is that Origins takes the time to make you as a player like Bayek before showing his tragedy. You see more of his warm personality and kindness. You see his bonds to the people in Siwa, like Hepsifa and Rabia. He's going out of his way to help people and serve as protector, as a Medjai. And something I noticed upon replaying the game was all the hints and foreshadowing of his son's death. There's this one particular scene where Bayek finds his father's old sword, who was a Medjai as well, and that the weapon was supposed to be passed down, where you can detect this weight and sadness in Bayek. At this point, it hasn't been revealed that Bayek lost his son, but this definitely gives you a subtle hint of what's to come. It was a great scene that you can completely miss out on in the opening hours if you don't go into this particular house and loot the sword. And by the point it shows you the flashbacks with his son, you already like him, you're already on his side, very similar to how the opening of Assassin's Creed 2 makes you fall in love with the charismatic Ezio before tragedy strikes him. And once you see what happens to Bayek's son, you understand his rage. You can understand why he's so intent on killing these masked men, and you cheer him on as he does it. Now the revenge arc is very common in Assassin's Creed. Like I said, a lot of parallels can be drawn to Assassin's Creed 2 with Ezio, but Origins is a little different. Typically, it's the parents who are killed off. It's like any time you're seeing an action story like this, and the main character has two living parents, you know something's about to happen to them. With Origins, it flips that. You are the parent, and Bayek's son is the one that's killed, at his own hands no less. That rage is a fatherly rage, and you can feel Bayek's guilt and hatred towards the Order of Ancients, so it does a good job of aligning your motivations with Bayek's. It's supposed to make you want to go and hunt down those responsible for his son's death, and with this revenge story, you get to see all the stages of grief with Bayek. You of course see the rage, the denial, the sadness, and finally, the acceptance. Bayek has a certain humanity and humility to him that you don't get from all the protagonists in this series. He's not always angry, he's not always sad or brooding. You see the moments when he's genuinely happy, and you see the moments when he's consumed by rage. He's never just one emotion, and that makes him feel human to me. He's never one-dimensional. And so much of that is of course attributed to the performance by Abu Bakr Salim. I honestly don't think it's a stretch to say Origins has the best performances all around from its cast out of any Assassin's Creed game, especially with Bayek and Aya. Salim's performance brings so much range and versatility to Bayek. There were so many moments when his performance put chills down my spine. Like, I couldn't believe this is the kind of acting and range you can get from a video game. He also brings this charm and warmth to Bayek, not to mention the sense of humor. <laughs> hey. You die easily for a god! You just can't help but like the guy, and like I said, he has this warmth and kindness to him when he's with innocent people, particularly children. There are numerous times throughout the story where you see Bayek light up and be great with kids. It's the father in him, and it's something that no other protagonist in the series can really offer, since pretty much all of them don't have children. Another great example of Bayek's kindness that I've pointed out before is how he talks a woman out of jumping off a cliff. This is just a random side quest you can stumble upon in the world, and Bayek is able to persuade the woman out of jumping by trying to joke with her and make light of the situation. Scorpion took my husband's life. There's nothing left for me now. You could find the scorpion that killed him and kill it. 
There's also lots of examples of subtlety and show-don't-tell in Bayek's performance. For example, when you meet with a seemingly old friend from Siwa just outside the Hippodrome, Bayek seems happy and friendly towards the man, but right at the end of the scene, there's a very subtle change in his body language, and you can see the fake smile quickly drop from his face. That split second alone tells you there's some history and bad blood here. And there's plenty of examples of subtlety like this throughout Origins, and specifically in Bayek's performance. And a big reason why this story works so well is because of Bayek and his personal journey. Another reason is his wife and legendary assassin, Amunet, or by her real name, Aya. Amunet had always been a known figure within the Brotherhood since Assassin's Creed II, known as one of the first assassins who was responsible for Cleopatra's death. And in a lot of ways, Origins is also telling her origin story, showing the events that led Aya to become Amunet, which was supposedly going to be the original main focus of the story, as Aya was going to be the game's protagonist and not Bayek. There was a report from Bloomberg a few years back claiming that Aya was going to be the protagonist, but the marketing department didn't like the idea of building a story around a female protagonist, which is apparently what led to Bayek becoming the protagonist and Aya's role being minimized. It also claimed that Bayek was actually going to be killed off early on in the game, which is an unfortunate situation all around and really stupid, because I I love Aya's character, but at the same time, I also love Bayek, and it would have sucked to see him killed off so early on. Regardless of all of that though, I really like Aya's presence in the game, Alex Wilton Reagan's performance is fantastic, and the dynamic between Bayek and Aya is one of the best parts of the story in my opinion. You even get a few sections where you get to play as Aya, both on land and in naval combat, which I also really enjoyed. It will forever frustrate me that we didn't get a sequel of some sorts to Origins with both Bayek and Aya as they evolved the Hidden Ones. Maybe in that game, Aya could have been the protagonist, or could have potentially been a dual protagonist game with both of them. It has to be one of the series' biggest missed opportunities. If there were ever two characters strong and compelling enough to create sequels for, for the first time since Ezio, it's these two. But it's Ubisoft, and these days, they wouldn't know a good sequel opportunity if it hit them over the head. Origin Story, like many in the series, also features a few big historical figures from the time, namely Cleopatra and Julius Caesar. As it so often does, it takes well-known figures from history and puts an Assassin's Creed spin on them by having Caesar be affiliated with the Order of Ancients, who would of course eventually become the Templars. Because you can't tell the origins of the Assassin's Creed without the longtime enemy and rival, the Templar Order. The Order of Ancients would serve as the eventual foundation for the Templars, with similar goals like wanting to bring peace and order through control. I liked how the Order of Ancients were portrayed in this game as this mysterious, sinister cult, where you have to investigate and discover each one of its members one by one. It's a rather simple but effective structure for progressing through the story, and there were quite a few twists along the way. Perhaps one of the biggest being that the man who had killed Bayek's son, ended up being Flavius a Roman general and ally of Caesar who led the Order. Now, as far as antagonists go, I felt Flavius was kind of underwhelming. He doesn't have a ton of screen time prior to this reveal. There's really not enough time spent with the character to give us any sort of understanding or motive for what he was doing, and it didn't really feel like he earned the right to be that final boss. Well, the final boss for Bayek, anyway. I don't know, it almost reminds me of the German reveal in Unity, except at least in Unity you talk to German, a fair amount beforehand. With Flavius, he's kind of just in the background, and maybe that was the point. The shock from the reveal comes more so from the fact that he's been such a minor character, rather than it feeling like a heartbreaking betrayal. Regardless though, I do still really love this game's ending, Bayek and Aya deciding to go their separate ways to create the Brotherhood and for the betterment of the world. Then there's that entire epilogue-like sequence with Aya assassinating Caesar, and the game ends with both Bayek and Aya 
becoming hidden ones as we see them build up and lead their separate bureaus. There's this really touching moment where Bayek offers to walk a kid home because he's scared to go alone, just like his son was at the start of the game. Just another example of what makes Bayek such a lovable character and shows that father-like nature is still in him. The game then ends with this beautiful shot of Bayek looking over Egypt to Origin's rendition of Ezio's family that once again gave me chills. I know some people criticize Ubisoft for overusing Ezio's family in these games, but it feels really appropriate here, being the end to what was the origin story for the Creed. Now, as for Origin's modern day storyline, it too is quite different from most games in the series. I think nearly every Assassin's Creed fan is in agreement that the modern day storylines after Assassin's Creed 3 were a complete mess. Many of them felt disjointed and irrelevant in the context of of the overarching modern day narrative, and that felt especially true with both Unity and Syndicate. So Origins really needed to bring that interest and intrigue back into the modern day storyline, and I think it successfully did. It certainly helps that Odyssey and Valhalla chose to continue from where Origins left off, but bringing the focus back onto one main modern day protagonist was what made a big difference. The thing that held those old modern day storylines together was Desmond Miles, and without him, the series kept switching from mute, nameless modern-day protagonists to the next, and it was impossible to really get invested in those stories and characters, especially since we never saw our own character. So even if Layla isn't as good as a modern-day protagonist as Desmond was, at least we have someone with a name, face, and voice we can follow. And I, for one, like Layla's character. The modern-day sections in Origin are typically very short and don't offer tons of substance in terms of story, but it was just enough to get me interested without being overbearing, which is more than what I can say for Unity and Syndicate's modern days. It does a good job of setting up the start of this new modern day story arc that could be carried on and progressed in future titles, and seeing where that story would eventually go in Valhalla makes it all the more worth it. And the ending with William Miles appearing really left me intrigued at where the story was going when I first played this game back in the day. To me, it's easily the best modern day storyline since at least Black Flag, and again, I really love how it paid off in Valhalla. Ultimately, I think another one of the main reasons I largely prefer Assassin's Creed Origins to the other two RPG games is the narrative. With a stronger narrative and characters as the backbone to the game, it makes everything within the game feel more enticing. Bayek is a character I genuinely wanted to keep playing and doing quests with. I never got tired of hearing his voice, which when you're spending like 80 plus hours with a character is essential. Origins is also the only game out of the three in the RPG trilogy to not offer choices, which in a narrative-driven experience is typically my preference. Don't get me wrong, I still love some games with choices, and they certainly have their place in those large, full-fledged RPGs but it's nice to just have one solid, consistent narrative to watch unfold, instead of trying to fill in the blanks and make the characters whatever you make of them. Bayek would not be as popular and beloved as he is if this game allowed choices, because then the character could be whatever the player deemed. It just wouldn't work, and I'm glad they decided against it in Origins. And while it's not the sole contributing factor, I believe it's one of the reasons why I find Origins' narrative so much more engaging than the other two. This game's story still isn't without its flaws, but I found it to be some of the best storytelling in this entire series, with some of the best main characters to go along with it.
Assassin's Creed Origins on its release was not a game I anticipated to love as much as I did. As someone who considers themselves more of a traditional Assassin's Creed fan, the type of game Origins aimed to be wouldn't normally be my cup of tea. But the way Ubisoft Montreal went about designing the game, not going too far with some of its RPG mechanics, while simultaneously giving us something new and refreshing in a series that so desperately needed it at the time, is why Origins is among some of my favorite Assassin's Creed games in the series. I don't believe it's an overstatement to say it saved Assassin's Creed. Regardless of how you feel about what came after it, you can't deny Origins was the change Assassin's Creed needed at the time, and for that, I will forever be grateful for it. Jump.